Microsoft Purview Information Protection Policy enables enterprise admins to centrally define and manage cross-cutting policies across data sources in a multi-cloud environment. In this demo, I will go through the steps to configure and enforce protection policies on Azure Data Lake and Azure SQL DB. Register data source and consent for policy enforcement in Microsoft Purview. Now, after the labels are created and published, when you run a scan on your data sources, Purview identifies sensitive data elements in your environment and applies the sensitivity labels. Create protection policies from the information protection apps. And when a user tries to access the, the data in your data source, if it includes sensitive information, Purview policy will ensure that only authorized user will be able to access the sensitive data. Data sources can be registered and enabled for policy enforcement through the data map application. From the information protection application, I can create sensitivity labels. I've created a confidential label out here. So this is a confidential label that I created. I enabled uh, the schematized data asset option so that the labels are applied on Azure assets. And for the schematized data assets, I have provided uh, the rules for a label application. So in this case, if um, the data includes any of these uh, system information types, the label should be applied. Now, for example, if I want the label to be applied as confidential, if it includes social security number. And then I create the label. And once the label is created, I uh, need to publish the label through the publishing policies. Now to create protection policies, I go to the protection policies tab and I can create a new protection policy. Now I can select the sensitivity label on which I want to apply this policy. In this case, I select a confidential label and I can select which data assets on which I want to apply this policy. So for Azure storage, I can select the specific storage accounts on which I want to enforce the policy. So I select the storage uh, test account that I have created and I want the policy to be enforced on this storage account. Similarly, for SQL database, I can select which SQL servers I want to enforce the policy on. So I select the set of SQL servers on which I, can I want to enforce the policy. I can select multiple SQL servers out here and add it to the policy. Now I can select which users should be able to access the confidential data. In my environment, admin is a privileged user and uh, I want him to be able to access the confidential data. Whereas, uh, let's say Alice is a contractor and I don't want Alice to be able to access the confidential data. In addition to individual users, I can select the group of users uh, that can access the data. So once I have selected the list of users and user groups uh, that should be able to access the data, all the other users uh, apart from this list will not be able to access the data even if they have been previously granted access. I turn on the policy and I create the policy. In, in my environment, I have pre-registered a SQL server and a storage account. So this is the storage account that I have um, registered and enabled for policy enforcement.
and this is a SQL database that I have enabled for policy enforcement. After uh, creating the sensitivity labels, I ran a scan on these data sources and the labels have been applied. Now to view uh, which uh, assets uh, include sensitive data, I can go to the catalog app and I can see the labels applied to my data. So I'll go, uh, if I'll take a look at my storage account. This is a storage container in which I have a sensitive Word document and a Parquet file. This document includes SSN number and hence the confidential label has been applied to this document. And this Parquet file has uh, sensitive data which is the SSN number and hence the confidential label has been applied. Now let's see how the policies are enforced on my storage account. I'll connect to the uh, storage account as an admin user. Now this is my storage account in which I have uh, this container that has sensitive information. Now, if as an admin user, I try to access the sensitive data, I should be able to uh, read that data or open that file. As you can see, I was able to open the file and this file has sensitive data as a SIM number. And similarly, I can open the Parquet file as an admin user. Now I will try to um, connect to the same container as a different user. Now Alice is a user who does not have access to the confidential data. Now if Alice tries to read the same sensitive document, She's denied access. And if she tries to read a non-sensitive document, she's, she should be able to open this document. And as you, as you can see, she can read this document. Now let's see how the policy is enforced on the SQL database. I've connected to this uh, database as user admin and user Alice. Now let's say as user admin, I run this query. As you can see, uh, this server has a demo DB which has a table employee info. Now this table has SSN information but since admin has been granted access to um, the confidential information he's able to retrieve this um, run this query successfully and retrieve this information now if i run the same query as user alice
you can see that uh, Alice has been denied access because she has not been granted access to the policy to the confidential data and it includes uh, confidential information out here. But this table includes, uh, SSN is a confidential or sensitive information, but uh, the other information may not be sensitive. So in this case, if let's say if name is not confidential and if Alice runs the same query and tries to access only the column name, she can uh, retrieve the columns that are not sensitive. Thank you so much for your time.